The universe is a composite of two extremities. Lao Tzu, an ancient Chinese philosopher, called it yin and yang. Newton said every action has an equal and opposite reaction. The two opposite forces always remain in equilibrium, and when this equilibrium breaks down, creation happens. According to the Big Bang theory of origin, the universe was formed from a stage of nothingness, since there was no time available before the Big Bang for any known matter to exist. For the energy of the universe to always remain the same, without violating the law of conservation of energy, the Big Bang nucleosynthesis must have created equal numbers of matter and antimatter. Antimatter is a negative counterpart of matter, having the same mass, but opposite charges, and when they meet, annihilation happens. Energy is released in the form of photons, gamma radiation, and neutrinos. If that was the case, then the universe must be filled with only radiation, and no matter should have existed. But as you can see, matter does certainly exist, and thus, there must have been some internal, and unknown phenomenon, that causes the abundance of matter over antimatter. What was that phenomenon, and why only matter got the upper hand on antimatter, and not vice versa? Let's understand in this video. My name is Kyle, and you are watching the world of science. There was a very minute imbalance condition in the very early hours of the Big Bang, that caused the matter to win the race over antimatter. Mathematically, this discrepancy was due to one extra matter, for every one billion matter antimatter created. This process is called baryogenesis, and it is the most accepted solution, for explaining the asymmetry present in the universe. But what exactly caused this extra matter to appear? From Noether's theorem, we know that for every symmetry in the physical laws, there must be a conservation law that is associated with it. Whenever this symmetry breaks down, the energy levels of the system changes, and an extra field, or particle appears during the symmetry breaking phenomenon. In the case of baryons like protons and neutrons, and leptons like electrons and neutrinos, the conservation laws present are called baryon number and lepton number. Baryon number can mathematically be expressed as one-third of the difference of the number of quark and antiquark. For example, a proton has three quarks and no antiquark, thus it has a baryon number of one. This baryon number and lepton number must be conserved for each particle for the symmetry to be preserved. But what are these symmetries? There are three fundamental symmetries applicable among the physical systems, and they are C, charge symmetry, P, parity symmetry, and T, time symmetry. Any physical system consisting of a particular particle must show the same results when that particle is replaced with its opposite charge counterpart, and when its chirality, that is the mirror image, is reversed, and also when the system is run along the inverted direction of time. For example, a system containing an electron will show similar results to a system having a positron, that is the antimatter counterpart of the electron, and having spin in the opposite direction, and also the time reversed. This combined CPT symmetry is applied throughout classical mechanics. But when we come to quantum field theory, the symmetry seems to break down. In 1957, physicists Sung Dao Li and Chen Yang observed the violation of C and P symmetry separately during the weak force interaction among the particles. But when C and P symmetry were applied together, there was no violation. In 1964, again two physicists, James Cronin and Val Fitch, observed the combined CP violation during the decay of a particle called kaon. A kaon can decay into its antiparticle, known as antikaon, by transforming down quark into down antiquark, while antikaon can similarly decay into kaon by transforming down antiquark into down quark. In quantum mechanics, we deal only in the probabilities of the events occurring, and thus we can find the probability of two decays happening simultaneously. For the CP symmetry to be preserved, both processes must have equal probabilities, but what Cronin and Fitch observed was that the both probabilities differ in their values. This is called CP violation. 
If the probability of antikaion transforming into kaon is more than that of kaon transforming into antikaion, then there must be an abundance of kaon over the antikaion. This case is not only applicable to kaon particles, but after the 2000s, two more particles such as B meson and D meson have been observed to show CP violation. These cases of symmetry breaking can be used to explain the asymmetry present in the quantity of matter and antimatter. One more phenomenon is used together with baryogenesis to explain the baryonic asymmetry. This hypothetical phenomenon is called leptogenesis. Neutrinos come in a variety of ranges of masses. Depending upon their chirality, there are left-handed neutrinos and right-handed neutrinos. According to this hypothesis, during the early hours of the universe, there was presence of mostly heavier versions of the neutrinos, and these neutrinos more often decayed into antileptons than into leptons. These antileptons can go through a quantum tunneling process and reach a stage of higher energy. This higher energy state represents the transformation of antileptons into baryons. Thus along with baryogenesis, a second phenomenon leptogenesis causes the decay of leptons or antileptons into baryons, and thereby increasing the number of positive matter present inside the universe. These two are not the only theories present to explain the so-called asymmetry, and there is much more to know. It is one of the most complex problems in modern physics and remains to be solved. What are your thoughts about the matter-antimatter asymmetry in our universe? Let us know in the comments. If you found this video interesting, please leave a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Do follow us on Instagram for daily quality content that'll make you fall in love with science. Comment down the topics that you want us to cover in our next videos. Make sure you subscribe to the world of science. Until next time, stay scientific.